In this video I will show you how to deal with multicollinearity. Let's say you have a multiple regression and a variance inflation factor above 10. This would be a sign for multicollinearity. What to do about that? There are several options for removing multicollinearity. You could ignore it. In many cases that's the best option. You could throw out predictors. You could pool predictors. You could find ways for addressing structural multicollinearity. You could use penalized regression, that is, rich regression or lesser regression, and you could not make specification errors. We'll be looking at all those six options. Let's start with ignoring, because for addressing multicollinearity, in many situations, that's the best option. What I'm going to tell you is based on O'Brien, 2007. You'll find the full reference information in the description of this video. And O'Brien basically pushes back against just looking at the variance inflation factor and when it's above, for instance, 10, concluding that you have a big problem and that you can't use the results. His main argument is there are multiple possible sources for a high standard error for a regression weight. One of those possible sources for high standard error is multicollinearity. And that's basically what the variance inflation factor tells us, that the variance of the regression weight is inflated. Multicollinearity is one possible source for a high standard error. But it's not the only one. It could be that there is just little explanation of the dependent variable. It could be that you have a small variance of the independent variable. And it could be that you have a very small sample size. All those are possible sources for inflated standard error. And then for a low test statistic and a high p-value. And O'Brien's point is, it's not a good idea to look at one of those impossible influences in isolation. And in his journal article, he shows this with some simulation results. That it's possible, for instance, with a high variance inflation factor, nevertheless to get correct, significant results, if at the same time, for instance, the sample size is large. His key statement is this, even with variance inflation factor values that greatly exceed the rules of 4 or 10, one can often confidently draw conclusions from regression analysis. So not throwing out the results from your regression analysis just because you have a variance inflation factor above 10. The key difference you have to keep in mind is, are your results significant or not? Because if they are significant, even though the variance of the standard error is inflated, it's still significant. Or again, in O'Brien's words, if a regression coefficient is statistically significant, even when there is a large amount of multicollinearity, it is statistically significant in the face of that collinearity. If you have a significant result and a high variance inflation factor, it's not a problem. According to Ebrin, you can simply use the results. Where multicollinearity could be a problem is if your results are not significant, because then the multicollinearity could be one reason why it's not significant. So in that case, you should discuss the multicollinearity as a possible reason for non-significant results in your discussion section. The next options are about removing multicollinearity, in this case by throwing out predictors. So if you have, for instance, two predictors with collinearity and you throw out one of those two, then the multicollinearity problem will go away. Problem? It's not the same model anymore. You are testing a different model, so for hypothesis testing this is not really suitable, especially if you have filled out a pre-registration, because you're testing a different model. This is more an exploratory analysis. The second option for removing multicollinearity is pooling predictors. You could use the mean as in a scale, or you could run a primary component analysis. The problems are the same. It's not the same model anymore. You're testing a different model, so for hypothesis testing this doesn't work. But as an exploratory analysis it is possible. So, for instance, you run your, your regression analysis, it's not significant, one possible reason is high multicollinearity, then it could be a good idea as an exploratory analysis to use one of those two techniques, throwing out predictors or pooling predictors. The next possible issue is structural multicollinearity. There you can't pool or throw out predictors. Structural multicollinearity would be in moderation analysis with an interaction term or in polynomial regression. For a long time it was thought that mean centering could reduce the problem of multicollinearity in those scenarios. However, the current view is 
mean centering has advantages, but it doesn't solve the multicollinearity problem. But it may be helpful for the interpretation, so I'm not arguing against mean centering, for instance, in moderation analysis, but it won't help you with the multicollinearity issue. The regression weight and the test for the interaction will not change if you mean center the predicted. Some more sophisticated techniques for dealing with multicollinearity are called penalized regression. One technique is rich regression, one related technique is lesser regression. I won't go into those in detail, but I've put some sources for that in the description. Journal articles and links to two YouTube tutorials about that, which I like. However, those techniques are more exploratory. You can use them for prediction, but not really for hypothesis testing. Advantages are they predict well and you could use them to learn which predictors really contribute to the explanation of the variance of the dependent variable. But for a specific hypothesis, I think those techniques aren't really a viable option. And the last possible issue, specification errors, multicollinearity, and in that case, perfect multicollinearity can arise if you have a variable with k factor levels and instead of only including k-1 dummy variables, including k dummy variables. So if you include one dummy variable for each factor level, you will get error messages with most regression programs, because then you have produced perfect multicollinearity, because the value of the last dummy variable can be perfectly predicted by knowing the values on the other dummy variables. Those are the main things to know what to do about multicollinearity. Thank you so much for watching. And I see you in the next video.